2012, early September, on a Thursday morning, I was sitting in my office and our administrative assistant, uh, Becky Wolf, uh, came in to my door and said, uh, there's a Reverend Godwin here and uh, she wants to learn about the foundation. Now I'm used to Reverend Godwin stopping by, but it's usually Lauren's father who comes by. Uh, who's the pastor at uh, Concord United Methodist Church in Athens. But Lauren, I think at that time, was, was relatively newly appointed to this church. And uh, she had stopped by while she was in the conference center for something else and just wondered if she could learn something about the foundation. She said she had always heard about the United Methodist Foundation but just wanted to know more how we could uh, serve Sand Hill United Methodist Church. And Lauren might be sorry that she stopped by that day. <laughs> but because Kim and I thought, fresh meat. Uh, you know, we're always trying to get uh, pastors to come to events or to have us at their church so they can learn about the United Methodist Foundation. And it was kind of a unique experience for a pastor to actually stop in and say, here I am, I want to learn. So uh, we were really grateful for that opportunity. I think we may have overwhelmed her with paperwork. And once you get us started, uh, you learn that we're passionate about our ministry. And, uh, but that led to our uh, being invited here today. And this is something that we've looked forward to uh, for some time. Uh, what we're going to do this morning is uh, I'm going to, to read a scripture from the first song and talk about uh, the foundation and how the foundation is related to the United Methodist Church and specifically to uh, the West Virginia Conference and how we can help churches like Sand Hill and other ministries. And uh, I'll talk briefly about how we serve uh, individual United Methodists as well as all of the churches and ministries in the conference. And then Kim is going to read a, a scripture from 1 Corinthians and she'll give some uh, examples through story of how uh, we serve uh, United Methodist individuals and help them fulfill their ministry of generosity. So, with that uh, introduction, hear the word uh, from the very first Psalm, verses 1 through 3. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on His law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither, and all they do, they prosper. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. I like that image of uh, righteous people being like trees planted by streams of water. When you think of the image of, of water uh, in the Bible, and particularly in the New Testament, with Jesus being the living water, uh, we, can, we can imagine that righteous people are those that, that stay close to God, that stay close to God through Christ. And when you think, think of other trees around that same stream, you have an image maybe of a church or I can think of, uh, of the West Virginia Conference as being like one sturdy tree that's planted near the stream of water. It has many different branches, and maybe out on one of those branches is Sand Hill United Methodist Church. On another branch is, uh, is uh, Wayside and Crossroads, all of these different branches, but it's the same trunk. Well, you might think of the United Methodist Foundation as being a different tree nearby. Uh, because the, uh, the uh, and maybe it was even born of a, 
of fruit from the, uh, the tree that represents the West Virginia Conference because the foundation was created by action of the West Virginia Conference almost 40 years ago. 40 years ago this month, uh, it was created and at conference uh, in a few weeks, we'll be celebrating our 40 year anniversary during our time uh, with the conference. So those of you who will be going to conference, uh, you, you've got a heads up about that birthday celebration. Uh, but the, the West Virginia Annual Conference created the foundation to be a support for the conference. Uh, and in the creation of it, they decided that maybe it would be a better support if it were a separate entity. So legally, the United Methodist Foundation is a separate tree. Uh, hopefully we have the same fruit and our root system is very much connected and our branches get intertwined with the branches of the West Virginia Conference tree and most importantly, we both get our strength and nourishment from that root system that's reaching out toward that living stream which is God in Christ. Uh, and there are other trees that are planted by the tree, by that stream, and some might be Presbyterian, some might be Baptist, some might be Catholic. They have different kinds of fruit, and maybe there are more than a few nuts on some <laughs> of those trees. <laughs> but they all get their strength and nourishment from, from the water. That's, uh, that's the image I like to have for the church and I think the foundation fits nicely within that imagery because as Lauren pointed out uh, we see our work very much as a ministry uh, I, I came into the role of the president of the foundation as a lay person after a, a career in law and as I got deeper and deeper involved, I, I realized that I was called into ministry and I'm fulfilling that through the role of a deacon and I'm actually still in seminary. So here I am uh, beyond middle age in my 50s and I'm back in school. Uh, Kim Matthews, our associate director, is a lay person, but she is also fulfilling her call to ministry through that of certified lay ministry. So a lay person, but very much in a specialized role in the foundation. So because of our connection to the conference, uh, and because of our intentionally seeing our, our work as ministry, uh, we fulfill our mission uh, by having an outward approach not looking at building up the foundation for the sake of the foundation, but how we can fulfill our mission by helping United Methodist individuals and helping United Methodist churches and the other ministries of our conference. So the primary way that we help individuals is through a ministry of planned giving. And... Uh, <coughs> This is a ministry where we are helping others connect their need to give and whatever their circumstances are with the needs that exist in the church or the conference or some other ministry. We're not out raising funds. We don't consider ourselves fundraisers where we're calling on people to try to solicit donations. It's the other way around. People come to us and ask how they can make a lasting gift that will support the church they love or the ministry that they want to support. So Kim is going to talk more about uh, planned giving and, and some stories that have arisen out of that ministry. And I'll just close by briefly mentioning the subject that will be uh, further expanded on during the, the lunch time together. And that is our service to churches and the other ministries of the conference. Because of this ministry of planned giving, we've 
we've uh, garnered gifts that, that the foundation serves as trustee for these gifts, and we can get good investment returns just by economies of scale. So churches like Sand Hill can place funds with the foundation for investment purposes. And uh, then when you need to make a withdrawal, it's all available and there's no penalty, no maturity date, uh, no transaction fees, and that sort of thing. So it's advantageous for churches, many find, to be able to utilize that service. But there's a more important uh, ministry reason for utilizing that, and that's because of what we call socially responsible investing. When we as individuals or the church place money in investments, then our capital is being used to further some enterprise. Might be a good enterprise, it might not be a good enterprise. So at the foundation, our uh, funds are all screened to be in accordance with the social principles of the United Methodist Church. So that you can be in assured that if you have funds with the foundation, you're not supporting the tobacco industry, uh, the alcohol industry, pornography, gambling, those sorts of things. So we think that's important uh, in the kingdom of God when, when our funds are being used to build up the kingdom of, of God. But what, what I'd like you to take from my few minutes uh, with you this morning, and I'm going to introduce Kim again, is that the foundation is a ministry of service connected to the conference by that root system and by the fact that we're both getting our, our strength and our nourishment from the living water, which is God in Christ. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to having lunch with you. <coughs> yeah. today is from 2 Corinthians, it's chapter 9, verses 6 through 15. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, He scatters abroad, He gives to the poor, His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for the great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ, and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with others, and with all others. While they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Amen. Amen. As I read that, and I thought about the foundation, and I thought about stories I might share with you this morning. Um, a couple of the verses, and it's Paul, so I think when you read Paul, sometimes you have to really slow down and read it in a little bit of time, um, because it's so rich and full. But a few of the verses... Speak to me of a few of the stories I'm going to tell you today. So, uh, well, let's start with verse 7. And look at verse 7 again. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. The story I want to tell you is about a young couple. Uh, their names were Grant, our Grant and Allison, and they were in medical school. And Grant had gone on several mission trips with volunteers and mission to Nicaragua, and he convinced his friend Allison, at this point they were just friends, buddies, he convinced her that she needed to go too. 
So they planned together to go on a trip to Nicaragua with volunteers in mission. 